Thanks for joining me for this high-level overview of the latest Ethernet Operations, Administration, and Maintenance Standards, otherwise known as Ethernet OAM. In this training session, we'll cover the troubleshooting, connectivity fault management, and performance monitoring functionality specified in the IEEE 802.3AH, 802.1AG, and ITUT Y1731 standards. As Ethernet has evolved as a carrier-grade service, so have the OAM standards that support resilient, easily managed deployments. The 802.3AH link layer OAM standard was the first to emerge, helping operators manage the last mile, typically linking MSPPs to the customer premises over copper or fiber links. As the MEF standardized Ethernet virtual circuits and related E-Line and E-Line applications, 802.1AG and Y1731 connectivity layer OAM were standardized, providing a uniform way to detect, confirm, and isolate faults. These standards allow operators to monitor service continuity at the port, EVC, or even application level, depending on the capabilities of the network elements supporting these OAM functions. The Y1731 performance monitoring standards provides quality of service monitoring for key service level agreement criteria including jitter, latency, and packet loss. Vendor-specific extensions to these standards also enable turn-up and in-service throughput testing as featured in our Ethernet and Metronid packet assurance demarcation units. The 802.3AH standard, now ratified as 802.3-2005, is better known as OAM for Ethernet in the First Mile, or EFM. This standard was designed to manage the single hop from the closest access platform to the customer premise, helping operators maintain reliable service in this typically problematic part of the network. Because of this focus, EFM OAM can only monitor a single hop, and messages do not propagate beyond the link. OAM information is not passed to other network elements. Alarms and info are extracted or sent from the operator's access platform. Key functions include discovery of the CPE, remote failure indication to notify the provider if a power outage or CPE failure occurs, fault isolation to identify whether a problem occurred within the provider or customer's network, a simple port level loopback function to check traffic transmission performance, and basic performance and status monitoring capabilities with alarm support. As a link level standard operating on a port by port basis, this standard cannot monitor an end to end link or EVC or a particular application. The limited loopback functionality is disruptive and does not support address or port swapping, limiting it to basic troubleshooting applications. More advanced functionality for many of these shortcomings is addressed in the more recent 802.1 AG and Y1731 connectivity and service layer OAM standards. Connectivity fault management, defined in both 802.1 AG and Y1731, divides the provider's end-to-end -end network into three distinct levels or maintenance domains, the customer, provider, and operator domain. The operator domain normally refers to a partner carrier's network, accommodating end-to-end -end links that involve a number of intermediate service providers for transport. CFM respects this hierarchy by ensuring that faults identified in a lower layer, for example an operator's network, are alarmed only at their level and at the next higher level. For example, to notify a service provider that there is an issue in the operator's network. This allows a service provider to reroute traffic around the outage while the operator has detailed fault isolation information to correct the problem within their own network. In general, the multi-domain OAM model ensures that the fault is alarmed and regulated within the appropriate domain while preventing a mass broadcast of alarms throughout all layers of the network. The multi-domain model is implemented in practice by network elements and demarcation units that act as OAM maintenance endpoints or MEPs and maintenance intermediate points or MIPs. MIPs forward OAM information between MEPs while also providing troubleshooting information for fault isolation should something go wrong. It's the endpoints that generate and manage the end-to-end -end OAM sessions. The relationship between any two maintenance endpoints is known as a management entity while a maintenance association or entity group accounts for all maintenance endpoints from a common service or provider. A maintenance association is domain and OAM level specific. All MEPs and MIPs are on the same service provider VLAN and are all within a single operator's network. The provider and their carrier operators have different fields of view. In this example, the service provider would see information from the elements labeled with an S, the MEPs from operator A and B. 
The operators themselves would have visibility down to their intermediate points labeled with A or B respectively, but would not see alarms and management information from the other operator's network. The key features of Ethernet OEM CFM are fault detection, verification, isolation, and notification. Service faults are detected by continuity check messages, or CCMs, sent periodically from the service source to the destinations at regular intervals. If service endpoints do not receive the expected CCMs within a specified timeout period, affected endpoints will indicate their loss of continuity with an alarm. Equivalent to the IP ping command, service faults can be verified using a loopback message and their replies. A series of LBMs can be sent to identify the location of a fault by querying maintenance endpoints and intermediate points along the service path. The location of a fault can be quickly determined by a link trace message, analogous to the IP traceroute function. When an LTM is sent to a service endpoint, all intermediate nodes respond with a link trace response along the path traveled by the LTM. The returned LTRs, and those not returned, uniquely identify the segment or node where the fault originated. Under normal operating conditions, link trace is also to be used by network elements to determine the path a service takes throughout the network. This root awareness is stored in a local database to expedite fault isolation and for link protection purposes. Y1731 supports customer-facing fault notification through Ethernet Alarm Indication Signals, or AIS, based on the standards originally defined in the ATM protocol. AIS messages are broadcast by nodes on either side of a fault towards the service endpoints, which then replicates the alarm for all services affected. To ensure that a failure state is maintained, AIS messages are sent periodically until the service is restored. 802.3ah does not support AIS as these messages can cause issues in networks using RSTP for link fault protection. In addition to CFM, Y1731 also supports a number of performance monitoring functions to measure frame loss, delay, and jitter. CCM messages are used to determine bidirectional frame loss ratios for a service. Transmit and receive counters at the service endpoints measure the number of received versus dropped packets, and the ratio is calculated from this data. It's important to note that this technique only provides an estimate of frame loss in the link, since it only records dropped CCM packets and does not record loss statistics for actual customer traffic. Y1731 also specifies techniques for both one-way and round-trip latency and jitter, also known as delay and delay variation. One-way latency measurements require that the service endpoints have synchronized reference clocks, while round-trip delay measurements do not. One-way delay is measured by sending a timestamp delay measurement test packet through the network to the far end maintenance endpoint that compares the original timestamp to its current reference clock to calculate latency. Delay variation is defined as the difference in the timestamp of two subsequently received DM packets. Round-trip delay is measured by sending a delay measurement message, or DMM frame, whose timestamp is returned to the originating node in a delay measurement reply frame. The originating MEP then uses the difference between the current clock and the transmission timestamp to calculate round-trip or two-way delay. An invaluable reference for your office, NOC, or lab, Exedian Networks has summarized this OAM training session into a pair of posters covering connectivity fault management, performance monitoring, and the multi-domain OAM model used in Y1731 and 802.1ag. You can request a free copy from exedian.com slash OAM. Getting a handle on the standards is only the start. The road to deploying end-to-end -end Ethernet OAM presents a number of challenges. Multi-vendor interoperability, OAM session scalability, performance monitoring, measurement reliability, and a host of other considerations require careful planning. Exedia Networks has a number of resources to help you. Our Y1731 fact sheet points out the differences between the OAM features typically available in network elements and base stations versus the hardware-based OAM features enabled by our Ethernet and MetroNID units. These micro-network elements offer the full functionality of the latest 802.3ah, 802.1ag, and Y1731 standards with unrivaled multi-session performance and measurement accuracy. We also offer a solution guide to implementing OAM over your existing network, delivering the benefit of full customer-to-core coverage without expensive upgrades to your existing network infrastructure. You can download both of these documents from our document library at exceedian.com docs.